And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna do this with bottled seltzer. And I have two bottles of seltzer here that um, one is actually cold, one has been kept refrigerated, and one has been at room temperature. So I'm going to start by explaining solubility of gases based on pressure and temperature, just looking at them before they've been opened. And then we're gonna do like a little bit of an experiment where I'm gonna pour them into three separate beakers and put them under different conditions so we can see how once they're open, once the pressure has been released, how just the temperature affects how well they stay dissolved or, or don't stay dissolved, okay? So the first thing we're gonna look at is when they're obviously under high pressure. If you look at unopened bottles of seltzer, right? How do they look? Are there any bubbles visible? Well, why are the bubbles not visible? Because the dissolved, in this case, carbonation is dissolved carbon dioxide, right? The dissolved carbon dioxide is fully dissolved, like you can't see it yet. And primarily with bottled soda or seltzer, the reason for that is because they're kept under such high pressure. If you've ever blown a bubble underwater, where does the bubble wanna go? It wants to go up and out of the liquid, right? So they don't dissolve very well at all because they're not very dense. They wanna float upward. So to get them to stay in the solution, you have to keep them under high pressure. So that's why when you like squeeze an unopened bottle of soda, like it feels so hard because it's under, there's such an amount of pressure in there to keep those gases dissolved when they've been, when they're unopened. So what I'm gonna do to start, and I should probably stop shaking these around <laughs> so much. I'm gonna open them. I'm gonna actually significantly decrease the pressure in each one by opening it. So right now there's high pressure in there. I'm gonna lower the pressure of each one. And what we'll also do is we'll compare which one has more bubbles coming out. So when the as the bubbles are coming out, they're becoming undissolved. Do they, does that process happen equally between the two? Or does one look like it becomes undissolved faster based on temperature. So as I release the pressure, that should be equal between the two. But do they look different right out of the gate here based on temperature? So I'm gonna start with the warm one. Okay, so we'll take a look at, as I decrease the pressure. Oh, what does that look like? So they're becoming undissolved. Oop. <laughs> Pretty quickly there. And this is the warm one. This is the room temperature one. All right, and you can see kind of big bubbles, right? They're all becoming undissolved now that I've released the pressure. It was pretty aggressive too, right? It wanted to, it wanted to explode out of there. Right. Now let's look at the cold one and see if that looks any different. And remember, gases like to stay dissolved if it's cold. So in theory, what I'm predicting is that maybe they won't come out as aggressively. Unless, Alex, when you went to get it, you shook it up in the hallway, which I hope you didn't. All right, so let's see if this one looks any different. So that one did not act as explodey. And there are actually fewer bubbles that are like doing the floating upward thing compared to the warm one, I'll even put them right next to each other. So this one is warm, this one, this one is cold. And so you can see that the warm one, the bubbles are coming out at a faster rate than the cold one. Can you guys see that? The bubbles in this one are coming out at a faster rate. So they're becoming undissolved, even though they're both, they both had their pressure lowered the same this one, the bubbles are still coming out faster than this one because this one is warm and this one is cold. Isn't that why warm soda goes flat faster? Yes, that's exactly why warm soda goes flat faster. Yep. So now we're going to look at it. I'm actually going to put them under more extreme temperature conditions and we'll compare them and see what they do um, by way of that. Okay, so for my experimental setup here, I've got a hot water bath. This water was just boiling a second ago. I've got an ice water bath. And then I've got my room temperature seltzer here, and I've got my seltzer that's been refrigerated here. So we're gonna try to, we're gonna do uh, a comparison between, there's my room temperature one, and I'm gonna use about the same amount in each one. 
I'm gonna put my room temperature one in this one also, and I'm gonna put it into a hot water bath. And then I'm gonna take my cold one, and I'm gonna put it into an ice water bath, and we'll compare to see how the three compare to each other just by way of temperature. So there's my one that's at room temperature. You've got some fizzing still happening a little bit. I'm gonna take my cold one, which has less, even if I put them next to each other, like here, you can see that in the cold one, there are fewer bubbles coming out. And I'm gonna put that into the ice water bath. And it pretty much is nothing happening at this point. And now I'm gonna take my room temperature one and I'm gonna put it into a hot water bath here. And you can see pretty clearly that there is a lot of fizzing happening there in the hot water bath compared to the room temperature one, compared to the cold one. So this one, your gases are staying dissolved because of in the cold water. They're all under the same pressure conditions now. This one is cold, pretty much nothing happening, so the gases are staying dissolved. This one is at room temperature, so they're coming out a little bit, and this one is in hot water, so you can see that those gases are becoming undissolved um, pretty rapidly. Okay, so the big takeaways from this are, well, two things for gases. So gases dissolve better when they are under conditions of high pressure, right? Because when they were still in the high pressure closed soda bottle containers, you could not see the bubbles under that high pressure because they were fully dissolved. Then the second condition is that gases tend to stay dissolved better when it's cold, right? So we saw that the one, the seltzer that was kept on the ice water bath, that had almost no um, bubbles becoming undissolved, whereas the one that was in the hot water bath, they were coming undissolved really quickly. And to circle back, remember we talked about in class, this is why fish tend to hang out right at the bottom of a lake, because what's the pressure like at the bottom? Higher pressure, right? As you go deeper in the water, you can feel that pressure in your ears. And what's the temperature like at the bottom of a lake? It's colder, right? So if it's colder and higher pressure, gases like oxygen stay dissolved better. And so fish are able to breathe better down there because they breathe by the oxygen absorbing directly into their bloodstream when, it, when the water passes over their gills, right?